I have spent the last 10 years of my life working as a data scientist for some of the biggest tech giants in the world like Cisco, Meta, and Wells Fargo. And based on all that experience, I'm going to share some honest advice with aspiring data scientists who want to become a data scientist in 2025 and the years to come. And the very first advice I would give is that understand that because of the advancements in AI, the game has fundamentally changed in terms of how you prepare for data science, what kind of interview questions get asked in the data science interviews, and then what does it take to succeed in the job as a data scientist, because things have dramatically changed in the last five years. So in 2020, the skills you would need in most data science roles would be that how do you do basic exploratory data analysis? How do you do basic data cleaning? And how do you do basic modeling, et cetera? All of these things now AI can do, especially if it is non-trivial tasks, like doing some basic modeling, doing some basic EDA, all of that AI can now handle. So what kind of skill sets are needed in 2025's data scientist? The thing which companies need most is your critical thinking. They want to know how good are you asking the right business questions? How good are you in problem solving? How good are you in communication, etc.? Because these are the things which are going to build an AI-proof career for you. These technical skills, they were very much in demand in 20. So if I were to plot it on a graph, let me show the technical skills. Let's say here we show what was the demand for different skills, and this is the time. Around 2020, these technical skills, they were very much in demand. Now we are seeing they're gradually going down. And if this is the present moment, let's say 2025, then we can see that their importance are further going to go down because AI is going to become better and better at doing these things. But the other non-technical things like problem solving, leadership, communication, they were still important in 2020, but would still be overlooked because companies needed a lot of people who could do basic EDA, basic bottling, all of that. But now we are seeing that their importance is gradually increasing and is further going to increase and increase in future because, again, as AI is able to handle these technical tasks, companies need people who could do these things which AI cannot do. And a very relevant effect is Lindy effect, which Nassim Talib often talks about in his books. And it basically means that any non-perishable thing like technology, the older it has lasted in the past, the longer it is going to last in future. And similarly, anything which has not lasted very long in the past is not going to last very much in the future. To, to explain it, let's say this is where we are currently. This is 2025. If, as we know, if there is some technology or some skill which was very new, let's say it started from here, then based on Lindy effect, we can see that it is going to last shorter. Whereas if there is something different, which had lasted very long in the past, it, it is anticipated that it is going to last very longer in the future. And honestly, I think that this effect applies very much to technology. We can see that any new skill or any new tool which pops up today, there is a really good chance that very soon that tool or that skill set is going to go away. Whereas the fundamental technical skills like SQL and Python, they have been around for decades now. And according to this effect, it's very likely that they're going to outlast a lot of these fancy tools you're seeing. And the other non-technical skills like problem solving, leadership, communication, they have been there for centuries, not decades. And according to this effect, it is very much likely that these skills are going to outlast all these technical skills and people who have excelled these non-technical skills are going to be in demand so much more in future. So let's talk about what kind of moat you can build around it to AI-proof your career. And if you don't know about the concept of moat, in the previous days when war used to come, armies used to dig around some area around their castle so that they can protect it from the outside armies. So moat is the protective layer around them to prevent them from the harm the enemies can cause. And it's in a similar way, as AI is perceived by many people as sort of an enemy which can invade their careers, then what kind of skill set can you acquire in today's day and age? 
to protect yourself as AI becomes even more smarter. Well, the first thing you have to understand is that when companies are paying data scientists hundreds of thousands of dollars in salary, they are not paying it so that they could have an AUC score of 0.98 or have an accuracy of 78%. All of that means nothing if it does not impact the business bottom line. Companies are paying you hundreds and thousands of dollars because they want to either earn more hundreds of thousands of dollars or reduce their costs by hundreds of thousands of dollars so that they could keep paying you to get those returns. And this is why 85% of data leaders, they value business acumen much more than they value technical expertise. So in the past, People who were data scientists, they would call themselves technical experts. But now and in future, I think a much better description is that data scientists are business experts who are very good at extracting insights out of data. So to protect your career from the advancements of AI, you have to become a T-shaped data scientist. So you need to have some knowledge about a lot of things, and these are foundational skills like SQL, Python, etc. And then you have to find one expertise where you go really, really deep. This could be related to your domain. It could be related to some technical skill. For example, you're an NLP expert who could solve different kind of business problem. And this becomes your mode because this level of expertise around one business area is not something AI can compete you against. And if you could demonstrate one project after another that you could solve some actual real-world business problem, then companies would be willing to pay you a lot of money in return because they know that you could help influence the business bottom line which they actually care about. So in natural, this is what your AI-proof playbook looks like. The first step is that you define what is your area of expertise. You define what is your speciality. You can say that I am an expert who could do time series analysis for some financial data, etc. Pick your niche. And then the next step is that instead of mastering the tools, you try to master the last mile, which is how do you communicate your findings? Because AI can do a pretty good job in writing the code and actually implementing the technical things you wanted to implement. But when it comes to the last mile of storytelling and communicating something, that is where you can shine as a human being. Even today, even in the past, 60 to 80% of the time of which data scientists used to spend was building presentation decks to influence the business decisions. And I think this is going to take even more time in future because that is where you shine as a data scientist. And then the last step is that use AI as an augmenter, use it as a helper. As I said previously, a lot of people think AI is sort of an enemy who is going to come after their jobs. Well, if you keep seeing things like this, it is actually going to come and take your job. But if you think that AI is sort of a tool, an assistant which can help you become much more efficient at whatever you're doing, then it can become your ally. It can become your friend who could help you succeed and become much more productive at whatever you're doing. As the saying goes, if you cannot beat them, join them. You can certainly not beat AI. So join it. Take the maximum benefit out of it so that you become much more capable and much more productive person than a lot of other competitors. It used to be that data scientists used to spend their time according to this pyramid. Most of the time would go into technical implementation. This is writing code, proofreading code, all of that. Then some less time would use to go into analysis. And then a very little time would go into actual strategy or problem solving, etc. So as now you have AI, which can do a lot of technical implementation stuff, and even a lot of analysis, I would suggest that you try to invert this pyramid so that it looks like this, where you are spending very little time into tech, you're spending a little more time into analysis phase, and then you're spending most of your time into strategy and problem solving and communication and all of that. Instead of thinking yourself as a coder, try to see yourself as a consultant who actually produces business impact. Let me tell you a quick story about how this works in the real world. So there was a junior data scientist. He presented a customer churn model to some VPs. Now that presentation deck, it was full of technical stuff. He showed what was the model he used, what was the parameters he used, what was the AUC score, what was the Persian recall curve, all of that. And most of the VPs were sort of lost after what 
that guy has presented and they had no idea what kind of concrete action they can take out of it. Even though the model was built on some very good customer churn data, the problem they were trying to solve of customer churn is a very important business problem to be solved. And also the model was built very rigorously, but the way in which it was presented, it had very little impact on the decision-making people. A couple of months later, a senior data scientist took the same model and then presented to some different set of VPs. But this time, he had just two to three slides, very impactful, without going into any technical details of what kind of model was used or what was its performance. He went straight into this two by two metrics, where on one axis, he showed what is the value of the customer. And then on this axis, he showed what is the risk of that customer's getting churn. And then he divided it into four axes. And then he showed that what are the customers who were in this area, which means that they were high value, but they were also at a high risk of churn. And then in the next slide, he showed that what are some common things or what are some concrete actions business can take to reduce the churn of these customers and what would be the, its impact on business revenue. Just two to three slides, very much around what is a business problem, what action can be taken, and what kind of gains business can get if they act on that suggestion. And that very simple slide deck, VPs were so much impressed and the project was immediately funded and whatever recommendations were given in that presentation actually started getting implemented. The goal you have as a data scientist is not to build a model. Your job is to get great business outcome. And this story tells you that how you can use effective communication to do that. So now let's talk about the two biggest time wasters I've seen people spending a lot of time on without getting much in a trap. One is Kaggle trap. Kaggle used to be a great resource, it still is, but if you just want to get started and you are building your first one to two projects, but after that, if you put on your resume that you have solved this Iris data set and Titanic data set and this house pricing data set, that is of very little value. You have to work on some real messy data problem, find some relevant data set, and then try to build a solution which is based on reality and try to solve some problem and show that if your suggestions are implemented, what kind of business impact it would have on that real data set. And the second mistake I see a lot of people make is that they become tool collector. There are so many tools which used to be used in data science and there are so many tools which are coming next. And if you start chasing one shiny tool after another, you'll be spending a lot of time trying to learn a lot of things which are sometimes not very much connected with each other. And it might look good because you can put a lot of technical stuff on your resume. But honestly, in today's day and age, hiring managers know if you have some shallow depth about some tools, that is of not much significance because AI can tell anyone how to use those tools. So your expertise goes again back to that T-shirt. This depth is what will help you from getting beaten by AI because AI is a very good generalist. It knows a little bit about everything. You cannot beat it at being a generalist, but you can definitely beat it by being an expert of something. So master concepts, leverage AI to do some basic things and then go deep and build your mode around that expertise. Now, I have a lot of bias towards action. There's no point for you to watch these videos and don't take an action. So this is my seven day action recommendation plan for you. The first thing you should do is pick one domain. What is your one niche which you are excited about? What is one niche where you have maybe prior expertise because of you did some internships, some school project, or maybe you have some real world experience, even if it is not in the field of data. Pick one business niche and then read two to three industry reports on, around that that what kind of problems that industry is facing. If you have some prior experience or if you know someone who has worked in that industry or in that area, then they can also guide you. But generally every business Every niche has their own kind of problems and you would find a lot of industry reports around that. So read those reports and then frame one business problem which you can solve with the help of data because that is what data scientists do. And then use AI to create a one-pager document around it. Connect on LinkedIn with people who are also trying to work on the similar kind of thing. And then ask for suggestion. Hey, this is what I think would move a needle on this thing. This is the recommendation I've been giving in based on my portfolio project. What do you think? Reach out to people, understand what they think about what you're doing, and use their information to further make your portfolio project 
even better. And if you want to download my free roadmap on what are the technical skills you would need to become a data scientist so that you have enough knowledge that you can start implementing it, then the link for that free guide is in the description below. Please check it out. Thank you so much for watching.